Hello and welcome back to Love Spell. Last time we spent a passionate night with Marcello and then got kidnapped along with Tito. So I guess we'll get a bit of action, well other kind of action than last time in this episode and probably the real confrontation with the Black Lions as this episode's title suggests. So yeah, let's get right into episode 8, A Black Lion. Lights, colors and sounds all stop morphing together as my consciousness returns to me. I slowly open my eyes to find myself in an unfamiliar room. Ugh, what the hell happened to me? Kay, are, are you awake? At the sound of Tito's voice, my eyes widen. I turn to move, but notice my hands and feet are tied to a chair. Tito is tied to another one next to me as he looks at me with terrified eyes. T Tito, are you okay? Are you hurt? I, I'm okay. I look around the foreign room as I struggle with the tight ropes that bind me. Where are we? Latana dei Leoni, the lion's den. Just as Tito gulps, I hear the door swing open, followed by several suited men walking in. They all wear cold, emotionless expressions as they come to a stop and stare down at me and Tito. My eyes widen when I recognize a pin on each of their suits with the outline of a lion. The Black Lions. One of the suited men glares at me as he growls in my direction. Red Dragon Scum, we can finally use these two to get rid of those bastards once and for all. But they're just a kid and a woman. Do you really think they're the ones behind all of this? I gulp nervously as I catch the sight of a gun on each of the men's holsters. Don't let their appearances fool you, idiot. They've committed crimes that go far beyond forgiving a child or a woman. Treacherous snakes. You're the snakes! You're the bad guys! Not us! Tito, no! Don't provoke them! One of the men turns around with a scowl, eyeing Tito with disdain and hate. I can only watch helplessly as Tito begins to shake in the face of the approaching man. What did you say, you little bastard? Why, I oughta... Don't you dare! At my scream, the doors to the room burst open, reve revealing a tall blonde man. The imposing figure walks into the room, and the other suited men immediately bow down. I gulp, feeling the intensity of his aura even as he enters the room. The, man eyes, the man's eyes scan the room, first narrowing slightly at Tito before they come to rest on me. This guy, he's different than the rest of these suits. One of the goons step forward and open their mouth to say something, but the man merely raises a hand and the goon immediately shuts up and bows. As he begins stepping towards us, I'm reminded of a lion stalking its prey. I watch nervously as the man slowly approaches Tito and kneels down to look him in the eyes. What's your name, kid? Tito. The man looks at Tito for a few moments before turning to face me. I feel my breathing hitch as his sharp red eyes pierce into me. And yours? M my name is Kay. 
The man's eyes linger on me for a moment longer before he stands up and walks a few paces away before turning around. My name is Sergio Selvaggio. Selvaggio? Selvaggio? I'm sorry. Head of the Black Lions. Now then. I feel my blood go cold as I watch him take out a gun and aim it straight at me. He narrows his eyes as Tito whimpers. Any last words? Oh dear. Oh dear. I swallow hard as I stare up at the menacing face before me. Sergio narrows his eyes as Tito begins to cry. He pauses for a second before lowering the gun. He shoots a look towards one of the goons and they immediately hand him a scroll. Sergio grabs the scroll, opens it and throws it at my feet. Tell me something, woman. Do you recognize these faces? I shift in my spot to examine the scroll lying in front of me and I wince. The faces of several men and women in suits are crossed out with a red X. Trails of blood cover the scroll. My breathing hitches. Well... I I've never seen these people in my life. I squeeze my eyes shut as I hear a gunshot resound through the room. Tito starts bawling as I slowly open my eyes to see smoke coming out of the barrel of Sergio's gun. I glance over to my left and see there's a hole in the wall next to me, mere inches from my face. Suddenly, a hand jerks my chin, forcing me to face forward, and I can only stare into the rage-filled eyes of Sergio. How absolutely sickening of you to not even bother to remember the faces of the innocent people you murdered. What are you talking about? You're the ones murdering innocent people. I haven't killed anyone in my life. Sergio looks me deeply in the eyes and he brings his gun to my cheek. I can feel myself beginning to shake as Tito cries even louder. Several of the men looking down, look down, except for one. How dare you play the fool woman? You're the ones who murdered our clansmen. You're the ones who... Sergio merely raises his hand and the man goes silent again. Sergio looks over at me again and this time he points the gun under my chin. I close my eyes, shaking uncontrollably and tears begin to fall from my eyes. Please, I'm telling the truth. Whether you choose to believe me or not, <laughs> at least spare the boy. He has nothing to do with this. A few moments pass and I dare crack open my eyes again. The only thing I can see is Sergio's intense gaze burning straight into my own. After a few palpitating moments, he lets out a deep sigh and runs a hand through his cropped hair. Tears are still falling from my eyes as he stands up, as he stands up. You are not lying, are you? B but boss! Quiet! Sergio bellows as he points the gun at the suited man, causing him to whimper pathetically. Slowly, Sergio turns back to me. A person capable of committing these crimes against us wouldn't have this look in their eyes right now. Nor would they care to plead for a kid's life either. So, if not you, then whose orders do you follow? Who's the one plotting against the lions? Answer me. I breathe in heavily and avert my eyes, but Sergio waits patiently for my answer. I can still feel myself trembling, but I do my best to look up defiantly. 
The Black Lions are the ones who have been attacking the Red Dragons. You are the ones who are trying to start a war. That's a lie. We're the ones trying to prevent one. But we won't sit idly by as crimes are committed against us. Tell me now, what is your true incentive here? Sergio aims the gun at me again, but I refuse to be deterred, biting down angrily on my lip. Fury begins taking over all my senses, bringing my shaking to a sudden stop. How dare you! You're the ones who were behind Marcello's father's death! You even hired people to kill me, just because I was seen with Marcello! How dare you try to pin the blame on us! Sergio narrows his eyes at me, and I glare back daggers. What are you playing at? Danucci's step had nothing to do with us. I saw it! The emblem of the black lines, just like the ones you wear on your suits. It was found on the harbor before Danucci's ship departed. The man who, always ta who also targeted my life wore one, and that emblem also appeared when Tito was poisoned. You're the ones behind all of this. Sergio growls lowly as I stare back angrily at him. Tears spill from my eyes, but I must have all the cour courage inside me to hold my gaze steady. Hmm. I've seen those eyes before. They're just like his. Sergio finally reaches into his jacket put his gun away. He turns around towards the men as he motions towards me. Take the child away and bring the woman to my room. No! Don't you dare touch him! Sergio looks back at me with stern eyes, but I can feel honesty radiating from his gaze. You have my word that no harm will befall him if you just obey quietly. I gulp as I exchange looks with Tito's worried eyes. Kay, I, I'm scared. M Marcello's going to save us soon, won't he? Don't worry, Tito. Everything is going to be okay, alright? I promise. Just be good and wait for me to come back, okay? I look over at Sergio as he patiently waits for me. I nod and Sergio snaps his fingers. One of the men next to me cuts my robes open and I stand up, rubbing my sore wrists slightly. Sergio looks at me as he motions towards the door. Follow me. Suddenly, one of the goons attempts to intervene in Sergio's path. He looks nervous as his eyes start from me to Tito to Sergio. The boss, wait! Is this really a good idea? Y you should kill them right now! They murdered our peep! Ugh. I watch as Sergio wraps his hand around the man's throat and lifts him in the air with ease. The man gasps as Sergio tightens his hold, shooting him a menacing glare. Let me hear another word out of you, and you're the one who's going to get murdered. I swallow hard as Sergio throws the man on the floor and he wheezes for air. Sergio shoots me a look as a signal to follow him, and I do, without a word. Oof. I got nervously as we enter Sergio's room. Two suited men close the door behind us as I stand guard outside. I watch as Sergio removes his gloves and motions over to a table with food. Okay, was it? Take a seat. You must be hungry. What should I say? 
I'm fine. I'll glare at him. Uh, le let's say polite. <laughs> Just as I say this, my stomach decides to let out a large growl. God damn it. Why now of all times? <laughs> wait. Did he just smile? No, wait. I, I can't let my guard down. This man is extremely dangerous. He could kill me at any moment. I stand my ground as I watch Sergio take a seat at the table. He starts eating as he looks at me with an almost amused expression. My stomach growls again and I can feel heat flood my face. Are you sure? I said I'm fine. Um, so, uh... So, you're Marcello's new woman, right? What? I... Uh, I don't even know how to answer that. Sergio eyes me bemusedly as he watches my frazzled state. He chews his food as he looks me up and down. I'm surprised. You're not exactly the type he usually goes for. What? What does it have to do with anything? Well, I'm just saying, the man usually goes for voluptuous women with exotic tastes. <laughs> Compared to his typical harem, you're more like a lost puppy dog or something. Puppy dog? Gee, thanks. Sergio, Sergio's eyes stay on me as he continues eating his food. After a few moments, he smiles to himself. I suppose puppies do have their charms, though. Did you call me in here just to insult me as a woman? <laughs> no, I didn't. My apologies. Sergio lets out a light chuckle, and for some reason, I relax a, li a little at the sound. He motions towards a chair in front of his desk. I sit in it as he takes a seat behind the desk. Okay, this is weird as hell, but at least it do he doesn't seem like he's going to send me to a torturous death just yet. Yeah, I don't know what to make of him. Now then, care to fill me in on what's going on with the red dragons? Like I said before, the red dragons are innocent. Marcello has done nothing but attempt to keep the peace. The black lions are the ones who have been trying to start a war. And as leader of the black lions, I can assure you that's not the case. Here's my proof. Sergio opens a drawer as he takes out a bag of pins. The pins resemble the shape of a dragon and most are covered in what seems to be blood. I eye the pins as I gulp nervously, recognizing them immediately from the ones I've seen Tito and Marcello and everyone back at the manor wear. Your face tells me you recognize them. These are emblems of the red dragons, are they not? They were found on the rotting corpses of each of my murdered comrades. Now, tell me, if you say the dragons aren't truly behind this, then show me your proof. P proof? But what proof do I have? Wait. Lombardi's hand shakes as he hands Marcello a small gleaming pin. The outline of a black line with silver detailing shimmers in the room's light. Marcello steps off Lombardi as he scrutinizes the pin closely. The mark of the Leone. My eyes widen as I remember Marcello's words. 
Of course, the pins. But I don't have any on me. Just as I think this, a small glowing light in my lap catches my eyes. I look down wide-eyed to see one of the pins now resting on my lap as a small trail of sparkles disappear. <laughs> mm. I see, I see. Philia? Acting like I'm attempting to reach into my pocket, I fumble around with the pin before I place it in front of Sergio. Sergio lifts an eyebrow as he looks down at the pin. Here's our proof. The pin was found on the harbor before Donucci's boat was attacked. It was also found on the men who tried to attack me. I believe you recognize the emblem as well, don't you? Is it not the emblem of the Leoni, a mark representing the highest ranking members of the Black Lions? Sato grabs the pin and brings it to the light. After a few moments, a dark look appears in his eyes. He removes his own pin from his suit and places it next to the pin I gave him. Bingo! I knew it! They're identical. Ridiculous. What a sham. What? Sergio brings his fists down on both pins. The one on the left breaks into pieces under his force, but the pin on the right remains intact. That pin was a fake. A f fake? My jaw drops as I stare at the shattered lion pin in front of me. Sergio drops the bag of bloody dragon pins on his desk as his eyes shift between them and then me. Hmm. This just got interesting. Wait, then that means... That means there's a possibility these are fake too, huh? If that's true, this is all one giant setup. Now the question arises, who's pulling the strings? I feel a cold shiver run down my spine as I remember Marcello's angered face from yesterday. S Sergio, wait, before anything, you have to speak to Marcello. Whoever is behind this will surely try to frame the Black Lions into being responsible for me and Tito's kidnappings. They could even report us as dead and if... If that happens, Marcello will not hold back. He'll attack you with everything he's got. It's almost as if... As if someone's purposely trying to provoke a war between the Lions and the Dragons. I can't help but gulp as Sergio looks at me with stone-cold expression. Quite a conclusion. But one fake pin isn't enough to warrant your innocence, nor that of the dragons. My men, my comrades, were killed and at the end of all this, someone will have to pay for those crimes. For now, however... It seems the water has become too muddy to see what's lurking at the bottom. Sergio picks a phone and speaks into it. Moments later, suited men march into the room. Stop everything. Send a messenger to the dragons. Inform, inform them that we hold Kay and Tito and they are safe. And no matter how tempted you are, do not engage in battle. Several of the lions stared, stunned, at their boss. Sergio's eye twitches as he growls. Now, people! The goons snap back to reality and quickly run out of the room. As Sergio follows them over to the door, he looks at me for a few moments before he opens his mouth. And as for you... What about me? I don't trust you, and you're not in the clear yet. But if what you're saying turns out to be true, remind me that I owe you a formal apology. 
I can't help but sigh in relief as I watch Sergio quickly walk out of the room. Maybe he's not so bad after all. Oh, okay, that went better than expected. <sighs> Later that evening. What do you mean you haven't been able to reach them? It sounds unbelievable, but it's truth. It's like the red dragons have simply vanished. Even all of our intel sources have lost track of them. We have no clue where Marcello could be or if he's even still in this town. I got nervously at those words. I look over at Sergio to find he star staring straight at me. No, he's definitely still in this town. He's not one to leave people behind. I watch as Sergio quickly dismisses the man and he furrows his brow. Well, this can't be good. What are you referring to? If my man can't track him down, it most likely means he's gone underground. Underground? I stare at Sergio puzzlingly as he returns my gaze with dark eyes. It means he's getting ready for the worst. No. I watch as Sergio's expression morphs into one that's unreadable as he stands up. Well, if that's how it's going to be, I better start preparing too. I can't just leave my people as open targets. My heartbeat quickens as I watch Sergio begin to leave. Without thinking, I pull on his arm and he turns to face me with widened eyes. Sergio, please, wait. Don't do this. There has to be another way. I'm afraid I'm out of options here, Kay. I can't just sit around as my own get hurt. If Marcello won't listen to reason, he'll have to listen to force. As Sergio quickly walks out of the room, I fall to my knees. Tears begin forming in my eyes as I hear the door click shut. No, please, not like this. I have to do something, but what in the world can I do at this point? After a few moments, I hear the door open. S Sergio? I look up hopefully, but my heart drops when I see one of the familiar goons from earlier reappear. He wears a crazed, angered expression, and I immediately stand up as he closes the door. Y you you just had to go on and open that big mouth of yours, didn't you, you little bitch? My eyes widen as I watch him pull out a knife from his sleeve. He grins at me with deranged eyes as he begins stalking over to me. Y you! You're one of the people behind all of this! <laughs> what a smart little bitch you are! What a shame you'll have to die so soon! The man lunges at me and I dodge out of the way. I let out a loud scream as I kick the knife out of his hands. Remembering the training Marcello gave me, I defend myself. After a roundhouse kick him, the man falls to the floor. He growls as his head whips up, veins popping out his forehead and his face beat red in anger. You're gonna pay dearly for that! The man lunges at me with all his strength but I use that to my advantage to send him toppling over. Just as he falls, he grabs my ankle and pulls me down with him. I struggle under him before I kick him square in the groin and run towards the door. I, I need to get out of here. Oh no, you don't. I scream as the man grabs me by my hair and pulls me back. But this time, as I turn around, time seems to slow down. 
I can only watch as a knife, gleaming menacing in the light, comes down to strike me. The man's laugh echoes in my mind as I watch the knife come down faster and with no chance to dodge. Damn it! No! I instinctively squeeze my eyes shut as my heart pounds in my ears. After a few moments, I feel nothing. My eyes widen as I look up to see Sergio's face mere inches from mine, staring down at me with a pained expression. Bastard. Sergio! I realize what happened when a drop of blood drips down from his shoulder onto my hand. W what? Sergio turns around with wild eyes as he slowly pulls out the knife from his shoulder. The man tumbles backwards as Sergio stalks towards him with intense red eyes. I knew I smelled a rat. Ugh. Sergio tightens his grip on the blood-soaked knife as he approaches the frenzied man. Now then, wanna talk? P please, I'll tell you everything. Don't hurt me, I was just... Ah! Serge and I watch as the man suddenly begins to convulse incessantly. After a few moments, he drops lifelessly to the floor and his eyes roll back. I stare at his eerily still body and I watch Sergio kick him lightly. No response. <laughs> Sergio quickly drops the knife and drops to his knee beside the man. He quickly opens his suit and he sees an electric metal band around his neck. <laughs> Whoever's behind all this definitely covers their tracks well. I is he... dead? Yeah, that electric band around his neck killed him. He's probably wired too, so whoever's behind all this sent that, sent that signal the minute they heard him crack. Sergio looks over at me with a worried expression. You alright? Yes, thank you for... Sergio? I immediately rush over to Sergio as he falls forward on one hand, using the other to grip his shoulder. Blood pours out of his wound and I approach him with a worried expression. He grits his teeth as he attempts to mask the pain. I am um, fine. Please, let me help you. Yeah. Wow, that was yeah, a roller coaster. Okay, so it's not been the Black Lions all along. It's been some third party that's trying to yeah make the make the Red Dragons and the Black Lions fight so that they can have an advantage, I guess. Who I've actually seen um, pictures of Sergio before and, and some comments. So I'm not spoiled for this route completely, but I've seen comments uh, of people on Sergio. And I think there were, there were a lot of people who are a fan of him. And I can see now why. <laughs> That's it's kind of an interesting character. Oh, dear. Whew, quite something. But for now, we're safe. Tito's safe. That's great. We'll see. What uh, yeah? What happens to Sergio? I mean, if he um, if he hit him in the shoulder with a knife, that's not vital. But of course, again, he still lose a lot of blood. But we'll see. <sighs> Actually, what I can already tell by the screen, if you've noticed before, these episode screens they usually have the um, the dateable character here on the side. But now we don't see Marcello. We see the heroines silhouette. So 
Minor spoiler, this next chapter will probably be from Marcello's point of view. Hmm. Looking forward to that. And until next time. Bye bye.